Ah, uh, bottomless pit. Death grips. Oh, what's up, everybody? This is Aiden. Welcome back to album. Welcome back to album of the week. And this week, we have. This week, we have what I would call my favorite album ever, okay? We have Death Grips, Bottomless Pit. And, um, if you don't know what this album is, um, well, you're in for a ride. You're in for an extremely good album. But if you do know what this album is, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I'm just gonna go through each track and list what I like and what I don't like about each one because each track, each one of these tracks is extremely memorable and unique on this album, okay? After releasing the double album, Jenny, uh, double album, Powers That Be, <laughs> not Jenny Death, after releasing the Powers That Be, uh, Death Grips kind of just went back to normal, and for the first album since the Money Store, they just did a straight up, just like no theme, no topic, just straight up bangers 13 times. Because every single album since the Money Store was kind of themed around something, No Love Deep Web kind of had this like ARG type aesthetic to it, when, and, uh, let's, and, uh, like follow up leading to its release leading to its premature release and then government plates kind of had this like like ride in the background more Zach hill and andy experimenting type vibe to it and then then he had the double album which the first half you know featured bork samples and then the second half was just like rock it was just some crazy rock shit and don't get me wrong those three albums are very good and i love them a lot as well but Bottomless Pit kind of was kind of just the culmination of everything that Death Grips did up until this point, and then just like use all the tricks and tips and shit that they've done over the years, and then just culminated it into Bottomless Pit, which is the best album they've ever made ever. And I would love to have this album on vinyl, but Death Grips vinyls are really expensive, so I haven't got my hands on one yet. But when I do, it'll be epic. Also, quickly before we get into like the main part of this video, thank you for 300 subscribers. Very epic. First song, giving people, giving bad people good ideas. I didn't really like the song that much at first, mainly because I thought the sampling was weird and the instrumentaling and the production just kind of fell short. But over time, as I've listened to it more, I've grown to just really appreciate it, especially the guitar riffs and the sampling's grown on me a bit. I quite like the voice. I, I quite like the giving bad people good ideas. I keep giving bad people good ideas. I'm not going to sing the entire thing out for you. But it's pretty catchy, and the, and it has the most catchy guitar riff of all time. It's really good. Okay, I I'm, I've grown to like this track a lot, and this one it's really really good. Second track, Hothead. This is like well, the the way I can describe Hothead the best, and it's how a lot of other people have described it as like a joke. But it's literally what Death Grips sounds like to people who don't listen to Death Grips. It's just loud, annoying, abrasive. Has it's very very catchy, uh, but it has like the most stupidly a like loud vocal performance that ride is given on any song ever i think the instrumentaling is absolutely insane with the drum just going batshit crazy and this and the most insane guitar back backing backing guitars ever and uh most insane vocalization and just absolutely insane production and this song is just insane the entire four minutes it lasts. It's also the longest track on Bottomless Pit, but that's not a problem for me at all because it's very full of substance and doesn't feel repetitive at all, personally. I love it a lot. It's a very good track, but it's extremely loud. And it's not one that I come back to a lot on this album, but whenever I do, it's always nice. Anyways, third song, Spikes. This is probably my least favorite so far. It's kind of weird. The beat's kind of weird, but the guitar riffs are really nice and... Vocal delivery is pretty cool too. Yeah. Track number four, Warping. I really like the production on this one. And the, the, the vocal delivery is kind of eh, but the production is really nice. And uh, yeah, that one's pretty good too. Number five, eh, is kind of weird because when I when I was first listening to this album a couple times, it used to be one of my favorites, but over time, it's just really like, just like went down in the pecking order. And now I'd say it's definitely one of my least favorites. It's still a very catchy song and the beats go do pretty the beats do go pretty hard for the most part but it's just it's also the most calm delivery out of any ever out of all the songs of this album definitely it's definitely the most laid back song and chill song out of the entire out of the entire album and uh, yeah it's not a bad song by any stretch of the imagination but it's just not one that I'm going to that I ever come back to really and um yeah the sixth song bubbles buried in this jungle is so catchy it's probably one of the better songs in this album. Bubbles buried in this jungle. The, just 
the way I would describe the song is that it's I've seen footage, but better. I know that might not that might not that I know that might not make any sense at first, but when you think about it, they they kind of have like a similar like structure structure like sonically speaking, like it's just like this like weird abrasive like not really synth, but like this like weird just abrasive like sound note frequency that's like that's the I I should that's the I've seen footage one. But this one's just like wow 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 wow. It's like I've seen footage, but better in like every single way, and it's a lot more catchy. I've seen footage is a really good song, but this one's just better and more catchy. And yeah, the production goes extremely hard, and and it yeah, the chorus is is excellent. I love it. Seventh song, trash, is also extremely catchy. We we upload trash, face down trash. We know trash. It's extremely catchy. The production is amazing. Those like horns, that like horn section that plays at the very beginning and during some other parts of the song is just an absolute eargasm to me every single time. I love it. And uh, yeah, this is an extremely good song. It's very catchy, very well produced. I love it. I can just go on and on, but yeah, it's a really good song. Eighth track, Houdini. I have something to say about this one. I would, I, I personally feel like Houdini is literally just uh fuck that from from the money store which is arguably the worst song in the money store it's literally fuck that but better in every single way want me to tell you why well fuck that and houdini all both share this really surreal odd and kind of like just like janky beat that and with this like weird like surreal production behind those beats and in that way i feel like they're very very similar Except Houdini is a lot more catchy. Three, four, fuck you, baby, disjointed Houdini, baby. It, it's very catchy. It's just stuck in my head. I love, the, I love this song a lot. It's it's one of the better ones. It's also a song that I feel like kind of took a while for me to warm up to, but yeah, I, I love it a lot. Ninth song, BB Poison, is probably one of my favorite ones from like the very get go. It's very straightforward if that makes sense. The beats are just. Psh, 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 psh. Like, they're just very, like, in-your-face and loud, and it, like, just, like, the synth, like, the weird, like, bass synth in the, like, that place throughout the entire song is very, like, satisfying to the ear. And, uh, and Ride's delivery is pretty catchy, too. Tenth song, three bedrooms in a good neighborhood on fire like a margarita made out of wood is probably my favorite song on this entire album. It's insanely catchy, it's insanely well-produced, and I love it in every single way and uh yeah but it has kind of a weird rhythm and and also one of my favorite pro little production like just like a nix that zach hill does in this song is that he plays like this weird like drum or like cymbal but he plays it going backwards so it's like <laughs> but like it sounds really good and it has like a tempo and it's like very clear and just like insanely nice production i love it a lot okay 11th song ring a bell is kind of weird it's like this like rock song it's like and then it's kind of and then mc ride comes in and then it keeps with the guitars and it's just it's just a rock song honestly it's just like a, a rock song and it's pretty hardcore and i love it a lot it's definitely one of my favorite ones yeah ring a bell america america now i'm coming to africa my death is money it's really catchy too 12th track 808 await um, I didn't really like this one at first, but over time I grew to love it a lot, and a lot of and the production is amazing. Like the parts where it sounds like it's glitching, and it's just like, ugh, like like the song. It sounds like the song's kind of falling apart a little bit almost. I like I like that a lot. It sounds really nice, and uh, and it's also extremely catchy too. Very very good song. Now thirteenth track, bottomless pit, the titular track, <laughs> titular, is probably my least favorite song. It's just. It sounds like every single song in this album previously, except just melded into like this one, just like the last final track. That's not nearly as good as what er everything that it was that was used to meld it together was, you know, which I guess makes sense because it sounds so it sounds like similar to like every single other song in this album, like combined, which makes sense because it's, you know, that has the title of the album, so it should represent what the album's about. So it makes sense that it sounds similar to everything else. But it's just not that good, and the lyrics are kind of goofy. I mean, I never mind the goofy lyrics in Death Grip songs, because, you know, it's kind of, they're kind of like a little thing that they do, and I don't mind it. But it just doesn't work in this song, and it's like, I'll fuck you in half, and it's like, okay, I guess. And the guitar is just the production's kind of eh. 
And um, yeah, it kind of leaves the album off. Uh, it leaves the album. The, it leaves an amazing album off on like a eh note. That's kind of sad. But uh, other than that, it's not a bad song. I mean, it's still like a seven out of ten. I'd say overall, I'd say Bottomless Pit is a very good album. It's probably my favorite album of all time. So obviously, I would give it a ten out of ten. Like I, I highly recommend it. Like it's amazing in literally every single way. Like every single song in here is good. There's no bad songs on here at all. Just with other Death Grips albums, there'll be very good songs on there and there'll be very bad songs in here. But with this one, it remains extremely consistent with every single song being, you know, just expanding off of each other and just building on until this until you get to Bottomless Pit and then it kind of falls apart a little bit. But other than that, every it's it's an it's an insanely consistent album and I, I love it and I highly recommend you check it out. Um, specifically Three Bedrooms in a Good Neighborhood and Bubbles Buried in this Jungle and the first song. So yeah. And Ring a Bell and Data Way and Trash and Houdini and Warping. Yeah. And Spikes. So yeah, those that's pretty much my thoughts on the album. Ten out of ten. It's amazing. I love it. And uh Hope you enjoyed this review, and I'll see you all in the next album of the week. Even though it's been like five weeks, um, so yeah, maybe I'll do this series more consistently. Uh, but this this was cool, and I'll see you all in the next video. And goodbye.